Today we're just going to be practicing our soldering on a little piece of perf board that you can pick up at your local radio shack. You don't have to get one this big, it's just what I had laying around. And while you're at Radio Shack, you might as well pick up a few other things. For starters, we need a little bit of wire. I use 22 gauge Stranded. And Stranded is really important. They sell a lot of solid core, but it doesn't work really well for soldering, and especially in arcade sticks. And if you're going to have wires, of course you're going to need wire strippers, just like these. Obviously for soldering, we're going to need solder. Now, get the thinnest stuff that you can find, and that's pretty important because we're going to be working pretty small. Also, don't bother with the lead-free stuff. It's really hard to work with. Just stick with good old cheap leaded solder. A damp sponge helps out because sometimes when you get a little excess solder on your soldering iron, you can just wipe it off like that. So why might excess solder be on your tip? Well, whenever your soldering iron isn't in use, you should always melt a little bit of solder on it and then clean it off before you're about to use it. Doing so keeps the longevity of your soldering iron's tip. And that's generally a good thing so you don't have to buy a lot of replacement tips. So now we're gonna get started with a process called through hole soldering. To do so, we'll just take a little piece of wire. It doesn't have to be very long at all. Just that much will do. And now just strip that little piece of wire. And you don't need to strip as much as you think. You just need a little tiny piece exposed. That much will do. It's really only about a couple millimeters long, and that's just okay. Sometimes I see a lot of jobs where the wire is stripped this much, or it might even be stripped this much, and it's really more than needed, and while in an arcade stick, that much can bend over and cause a short circuit. So just keep it short like that. And since this is through hole soldering, we're going to take the exposed piece of wire and thread it through the hole. You're going to want to thread it so that the exposed piece of wire is going through to the side with all the copper holes like that. This is very important for soldering later because you can't solder to non-metals. You heated up your soldering iron and melt a little solder over the top, right? Good. Okay, well now clean it off because it's time to get soldering. Now you're going to want to bring together the solder and the soldering iron right over the little piece of wire that's exposed over the copper hole. The two brought together will cause the solder to melt just like so and it'll leave a nice little metallic nipple for you to look at. Now be sure and check it to make sure that it's not touching any of the other holes. And you can also be sure to give it a tug to make sure it's good and secure. This is why I will always recommend soldering over other methods, because it's so much more secure than duct tape and twisting wires together and a bunch of other methods that I've seen to dual mod sticks, because believe me, I've had to repair a lot of them and they aren't pretty. Now for you to practice and get your technique down, you can just strip the other end of the wire and stick it through another hole and repeat the process again. Nothing new, no tricks this time. Going through the hole again. You can pick any hole that you want, it doesn't really matter because we aren't connecting this to anything. This is just for you to practice how to solder. It's important for you to actually understand what soldering is. And a really good way to compare it is just metallic precision hot gluing. Just like with hot glue, you're melting a material until it reaches a certain point and then becomes a liquid. And then, when you remove it from the heat, it becomes hard and solid again. This is what solder does as well. In this case, however, it's much stronger than hot glue, and you're also making electrical connections while doing it. Remember how I said that you should make sure that the solder doesn't touch more than one of the copper holes? Well, this is very important because doing so creates what we call a solder bridge. Solder bridges are nasty things that cause short circuits and can generally break an entire circuit board. So you need to make sure that any time that you make a solder and bridge, you need to be able to fix it. This is what one looks like. The two holes are connected together, and this is not what we want. 
Generally, the easiest way to do so is to remove excess solder, and there are two things we can use, a desoldering pump or a desoldering braid. In this case, I'm going to start with a pump. There are two buttons on the desoldering pump. One is spring-loaded and the other is a button on the side. Push down the spring-loaded one before melting the solder with your soldering iron, and then press the remaining button to suck it up. Then there's the desoldering braid, which works a little bit differently by wicking away excess solder. Of course, you're going to have to heat up this solder whenever you do it, just like you did with the desoldering pump. Because the braid gets so hot whenever you do this, I use a pair of locking hemostats to hold it. However, you don't have to use these. You can also use a pair of pliers, like these. However, just be sure that you do not touch this with your bare hands whenever you're using it. I still have a little bit of solder on my tip, so before I get started, I'm going to clip that off. I'm just going to take my wire cutters slash strippers and cut off the little excess piece that we don't need. Just heat up the solder bridge just as before, and we're going to just hold the copper desoldering braid right next to it. It'll wick it away itself. You can see this process takes a little bit longer than the pump, however, you don't have all the motion and shock whenever you move the pump, which can be important because I have broken off components using a pump of them before. So the desoldering braid is my preferred method of removing excess solder. A good way to practice avoiding solder bridges, especially whenever you're working this small, is to just take the solder and melt it over holes and try to avoid making a solder bridge. Just keep doing this over and over until you get it consistently down. After many attempts, you may get something that looks just like this. Ta-da! A nice row of little beads that aren't touching each other. In the corner above it is the solder bridge. I mean, that is not what you want. Them touching together? Bad. This is really useful when assembling circuit boards that have a through-hole design, just like in some of my other videos. Now here's just a regular old resistor, pretty darn common thing, and using this process, this is how we can solder it to a circuit board. We can use our regular perf board to do the same exact process that we did with the wire. Now I'm not saying you have to go out and grab a pack of resistors and get practicing with that. That's what the wire is for. However, I'm just doing this to demonstrate the fact that this is a very useful technique. It's also much easier than the other method that this video will cover. Then after you've soldered them on, use a pair of diagonal nose pliers to trim the excess leads. This isn't really that big of a deal whenever you're practicing soldering. However, this is used a lot whenever you're making circuit boards. Again, you can try to tug these off, even take a pair of pliers to them, try to pull it off, but the solder will hold, and that's a sign of a good job. Now the other method that we're going to use and go over is surface mount soldering, and this is used quite frequently whenever you're modding arcade sticks, so it's a pretty darn good thing to practice. Again, we just want to strip a few millimeters off of our wire. In fact, that was a little bit too much for my taste, so I'm going to trim it even shorter. You can barely tell that there's exposed wire there, but it's more than enough to get the job done. Very important in this case because long exposed wires can touch together causing short circuits. Here I'm using a process called tinning. It's where we melt a little bit of solder over the tip of the wire, creating a nice solid piece of wire out of our stranded wire. It also means we don't have to necessarily apply extra solder whenever we're soldering the wires on. I'm just going to use one of the holes that I melted a little bit of solder over beforehand, practicing making sure that we aren't making any solder bridges. And with the tin piece of wire, I don't need any additional solder, so I just melt it on and stick it together. If you've done it properly, you'll get something that looks just like this. You can still try to pull it off, but still, it's just as solid as before. Now, for more practice, we're just going to solder on more pieces of wire next to each other. So I'll just clip off the extra of this wire right here, leave it like so, and then continue on with the process. Try to practice with a hole right next to the wire that you soldered on, 
This is so that you can practice making sure that you aren't making any more solder bridges, because it's a big possibility. But again, this causes short circuits and can cause problems with your joystick, problems with your buttons, or just completely kill the circuit board. So always make sure that even if you make a solder bridge, be sure to clean it up. Just like so, we can do the same process again. It takes a pretty steady hand and a lot of experience to be able to get this down, just like so. I've practiced this a lot, I've modeled a lot of joysticks, and I've had to fix a lot of them as well. However, if the people were as good as me, I would have never had to fix all these joysticks in the first place. So just keep practicing your soldering, because believe me, it will make you a much better modder in the end. And while the methods that are like, strip a little bit of wire, twist them together, duct tape them, they'll hold them in place, they're never going to be as solid as soldering it into place with hard, hot metal glue. Additionally, when you're surface mount soldering, there's another very useful thing that you can use, and that would be flux, right here. It comes in liquid and paste form, both work, and they both help out tremendously when you're soldering. But what do they actually do? Well, if you notice, whenever you solder, there's always a little bit of smoke. Well, that's actually flux in the solder burning off. What flux does is it helps solder flow. And by using more flux, you can get the solder to flow and stick better than before. All you have to do is put a few drops over the spot that you want to solder to, or if you're using paste, spread a little paste over the point that you're trying to solder to, and then just solder to it. In this case, it wasn't very noticeable of the flux. It tends to smoke a lot, so I'm going to do it one more time to really show it off. And the fact that it's flowing and sticking better will make it much easier on you if you've never done this before. It's not really noticeable when I do it because I'm so practiced that it doesn't really matter. But you will notice it if you use it. Now again, it's not necessary, but I do recommend it. I'm just going to strip the wire again and do the process one more time. Also notice that I'm doing this to one of the bare holes and that is much easier whenever you have flux involved because it can use the solder more effectively that's melted onto the wire beforehand. Flux burns off as you use it more and so using additional flux that wasn't burned off whenever you melted the solder at the first place to tin it will make it much more effective. And right here you have a nice plume of smoke. That's the flux working its magic. And once you can get a bunch of wires subsequently next to each other without any bridges and do it consistently just as I've done, there's probably nothing in the world of arcade sticks that you can't solder or mod.